right. Well, welcome, Pat. Thank you so much for joining us to talk about fishing, hunting, trapping, and all things conservation. Um, why don't you go ahead and, and tell us a little bit about what you do and the field as a whole. Okay, well, well thanks everybody for uh, tuning into this. Uh, like you said, my name is Pat Sheehan. I'm the uh, special projects ranger out here at Story County Conservation. I've been here for a little over three years. Uh, prior to that, I worked up at Webster County Conservation for 17 or 18 years, I believe. Um, but uh, I'm sure a lot of people, uh, especially a couple of you probably don't realize the difference between the County Conservation and the Iowa Department of Natural Resources. Um, Creek areas of the Iowa Department of Natural Resources is in the state. Story County Conservation is the actual the county. Uh, well, most of our funding comes from the county taxpayers, uh, other different grants and state uh, funding as well. But the state is all uh, just throughout uh, the entire state. Uh, in, in Iowa, the county conservation system has all 99 counties that have their own separate uh, conservation board. Uh, we're kind of unique because where we're operated, we have our staff, but then we have a conservation board, which is usually anywhere from three to five different uh, uh, volunteers that volunteer their time that report directly to the county supervisors. Um, so it's completely separate. It's a little bit different also because usually a lot of departments in the county have to report to one uh, entity like the, the supervisors where with the conservation, we go to our board and then to the county supervisors, um, which is good if we have, we always have really great support with that. So it helps with everything that we're doing um, when we had the support on all of those. Um, like I said, if, if you saw in my title, I did say special project ranger. Uh, with that, I am uh, a law enforcement officer. Um, I do all the fishing game um, enforcement throughout the county as, long, as, uh, as well as at the campgrounds. Um, the beaches we have around here at Hickory Grove, uh, Peterson Pits, we're out there, we're monitoring all those. Um, and, and we're countywide. Uh, we can go uh, outside of the county as long as we're with another state uh, conservation officer or anything like that, but we're primarily, we're focused here in the county and most of our efforts are going to be uh, on our areas, which um, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably know of a lot of our areas that Pearson Pits, Hickory Grove, um, uh, a lot of high usage on those areas. Our new mm -hmm. Tedesco Environmental Learning Corridor down by the airport. Um, I live on site there in that place since COVID hit has just been completely packed. So um, believe it. The usage there has been incredible. Um, uh, kind of touching on that too, like um, with the crazy times of the COVID, uh, people are always asking, constantly ask me how, like how we've been handling it, um, if we've really been slow or whatever. Uh, but in April, when it was first really started kicking in, we were busier than heck, especially in the law enforcement side, because our parks were just nonstop. Uh, people mm -hmm. in Farland Park out here where I'm based out of, there was people parked on the road half the time. They were so busy. Um, uh, to the Tedesco property. Uh, social distancing was a problem out there because there were so many people walking. Uh, it, was, it was interesting. <laughs> and then bike trails. The, uh, we actually were able to, unfortunately, we had two counters down on the Heart of Iowa Nature Trail, one of our paved sections, and usage um, on one of them went up uh, over 100%. Uh, you know, say we had 100, we had 200 people. Obviously, it's a lot larger numbers. Uh, unfortunately, one of our counters that we were really counting on was not functioning correctly, uh, so we didn't get a, a true uh, count on that, I should say. Uh, but just visually, we can tell. You go out there to uh, even the R38 bike lanes heading south, uh, mm -hmm. heading down towards the High Trestle Trail, uh, constant bikes. Um, the outdoor recreation really took a big boost this year, which uh, I think it's going to be great for, you know, just the public image for historic kind of conservation, the DNR and all other kind of conservations, just from the amount of uh, usage that everyone got. And so many people got out and saw areas they've never seen before. Uh, mm -hmm. Preserved down by Huxley, constantly getting emails on that. People saying how beautiful the prairie was and everything like that and how they enjoyed the trails. Uh, and a lot of the comments were, I've never seen this area before. Well, people had the chance this year, especially in April, May, uh, they got to enjoy this park or, or all of our areas. And McFarland Parks, it's always pretty busy with uh, walkers, joggers, uh, nature lovers, but this year has been uh, pretty much through the roof. Wow. 
Well, that's great. It's it's good to know that people are taking advantage of all the resources right here available to them in the county, especially when there's so much going on that we don't know about. <laughs> so that's great. Um, so what are some of the type of types of careers that are available um, at the county, state, and then also federal level in this area? Um, with that, you know, starting with the county, we have Story County Conservation Wing. I believe we're up to 23 employees now, from a director, uh, park superintendent, um, and then myself, the special project ranger. We have two other park rangers. We always, we call them unit rangers because we kind of split up into the other sides, uh, one side of the county and the other. Um, we have four naturalists and an environmental education coordinator. Uh, we have plenty of office staff out there. Um, we have a natural resource specialist. Um, he's out there. He's the one that's uh, monitoring our prairie burns, uh, doing all the mm -hmm. natural resources out there. Uh, then we also have our RVM, our integrated roadside vegetation management. So they're the ones out there. They're spraying the ditches for weeds, items like that, they're cleaning out the dredge ditches of trees um, and private landowners' uh, um, information. So we go from anywhere from law enforcement all the way to naturalists, from natural resources from in the wild areas to natural resources in the ditches. Um, you translate over that over to the Iowa DNR, there are uh, incredible amount of different opportunities there. They have park rangers, park managers, conservation officers. Um, they don't have too many naturalists, but they have naturalist components in there. And then okay. the other side of the Iowa DNR, they also have the water monitoring and uh, the whole different aspect through that that I'm not even that familiar with. They get into a lot of monitoring and stuff like that um, on that side. Uh, in Iowa, we also had the federal government here, the places like Sailorville, Red Rock. Um, they have, uh, those are federal campgrounds. Uh, oh. By Jester Park, you know, there's county campground and then right next to it's a, a federal. So they do have federal park rangers there as well. Um, so Iowa's represented on all three branches of uh, the government. Um, cities, some of them do have a little bit of conservation then as well they have foresters they go out there and they'll do the, uh, the tree cutting and items like that um so yeah it's pretty the conservation fields kind of represented all the way through and then there's also private entities i mean the nature conservancy we also have uh, uh i was very blessed to have the iowa natural heritage foundation uh who's the president uh, used to be a story county employee a story county <laughs> conservation who works for the IVM. uh here's for my hometown so that kind of helped uh, uh, but then those kind of groups are just integral because everyone knows that the government, you know, sometimes money's tight, items like that. But then we get in with this, the um, um, those private entities are really great for getting awareness and monetary funds to help us out. Okay. So with that wide breadth of opportunities, I'm sure that comes with a, a diversity in education or training requirement. Um, like for example, since you're in law enforcement, did you ever go to a police academy? Did you have to do that? Or is there another training that you do um, for your particular role? Yeah, I, I get that question an awful lot uh, when I'm <laughs> out there patrolling. Um, I don't have it on now, but um, yeah, when I'm out patrolling, I'm in full gear. I have the, the vest. I have all, the, all those items with me. Um, but yes, all county and state uh, park rangers, uh, so county and state uh, park rangers, conservation officers all go through the state Iowa Law Enforcement Academy. Wow, okay. I'm, I'm lucky enough, I'm old enough, it was only three months, now it's up to, it's over four months now. Um, <laughs> so it's um, definitely, uh, yeah, you're, you're down there with all the sheriff's deputies, all the town cops, everything like that. Um, okay. I had a lot of fun when I was down there at the Law Enforcement Academy, and they, they, they work you hard. Um, but it's very interesting that you learn. Uh, and granted, so much has changed in the last 20 years since I've been through there. Uh, but we also have continued education. Um, I'm also a, I'm the past president of our CCPOA organization, County Conservation Peace Officer Association. Um, where we help get all the mandated training for all of our offers throughout the state. We have over 100 pushing 160 officers now. We get, we get a, we provide most of the mandated training they need to stay current with their certification. Um, it's just a little option we give them. Um, also, we, you know, we help them with firearms qualifications. We go down this, uh, every year we go down to Iowa Law Enforcement Academy and offer that opportunity to people to be able to qualify with their handguns or rifles and then give them the, the mandated training every year, of mental health, uh, mandatory reporting. Uh, okay. Wow. 
So would you say um, the breakdown of careers in this field, do they, um, are they pretty well divided between education levels as far as two-year degrees, four-year degrees, or special certificates? The, that has really changed over the years. When I, when I first started 20 years ago, um, I would have said it was probably about 50-50 uh, four-year degrees or any kind of college degree and then just high school degree. Since then, I, um, I would say all new hires um, definitely have a minimum of a two-year degree and probably 90% of them have four-year degrees. Uh, wow. It just gets to the competition of the field. Okay. Uh, Luckily, here in Iowa and here in Ames, we have Iowa State University. Uh, yeah. That's where I got my for my bachelor's degree in wildlife biology. Uh, it actually, is taking the animal ecology and wildlife division, uh, but they have a wonderful NREM program there, um, forestry uh, interpretation. Uh, so, like I said, pretty much new hires now. Most of them will have four-year degrees. If not, they're um, pretty much uh, all positions we have uh, usually require a four-year degree. It, um, and I, I say require, but it doesn't really because it only asks for a high, high school or a two-year degree. Okay. Um, but when 30 people put in and 20 of them have four-year degrees and experience, uh, it makes it uh, difficult. Um, so sure. Getting a degree is one thing, but getting experience is uh, the most valuable. You want to involve yeah. getting internships. Uh, those are the important items that you, uh, that you need because uh, employers will see how good you do. And uh, if you do a good job, they also talk to the next county or the next division, and um, you, you become highly sought after at, for a job. That makes, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so what is something that you love about your job? I always say that, you know, the best thing about my job is every day is something different. Um, especially with the county conservation, especially when I was when my previous job. Um, and this one is pretty much the same. Uh, if you go, if you look at the conservation officers, the state game wardens, they are 99% law enforcement. If you the fisheries biologists, they're 99% fisheries, same wildlife going down the line. Where I get to kind of dabble in all those aspects, you know, probably a quarter of my job is law enforcement. Uh, the rest is in the wildlife and the natural resources. Um, I get to talk to groups like this, uh, help out uh, as much as I can, uh, probably not as enough, uh, helping out with the naturalists, you know, uh, doing programs. Um, but every day is a little bit different. Um, I did want to go to college and get a job sitting behind a desk the rest of my life. Granted, when I started this new job, a lot of my job now is sitting behind a desk because I do a lot of the grant writing. Um, if you guys like to ride bikes and everything, uh, I've been the one writing all the grants and doing <clears throat> doing the project management out down the heart of our nature trail, um, which more of like an accomplishment. Um, things you kind of strive for, you know, where there's 32 miles in the state of, in through Story County for, on the heart of our nature trail. And hopefully in two weeks, we will have uh, over nine miles paved from the High Trestle Trail going all the way to the uh, Skunk River. Um, so those are the kind of items that we you look forward to trying to, you know, set goals and accomplishments. So, awesome. Uh, what is the hardest part about your job? There's many <laughs> aspects of the job. Um, a lot of it um, is dealing with the public day in and day out, especially in law enforcement, and not just law enforcement, from people calling asking questions and concerns. Um, law enforcement, that's it's. Because it's a little bit different for park rangers compared to a city PD or anything like that. We are more, you know, responsive or they're responsive, but we go out there, we're making contacts. I see someone fishing, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to go talk to them. 99.9% um, of the time, it's a great thing. I talk to them, they have their license, how they're doing, how they're fishing, or how the fish has been going. Same thing with hunting. Um, and I also get that question a lot also, as you know, I don't have it on me today, but, you know, the full gear with the, with the pistol and the mace and the, the taser. Um, when you're out there working in the field, you know, fishermen, you know, a lot of those people, they're outdoorsmen. Chances are, you know, they uh, might have, a, uh, you know, a concealed permit or something. If you're out there working, uh, checking hunters, well, obviously, you know, unless, unless they're bow hunting, they're also going to be, have a firearm of some kind. So, um, and that makes it difficult at times, but at the same time, that's, 
with years of experience and having my knowledge of hunting and fishing throughout the years, being able to talk to people and being able to read people, look at them and kind of know um, if they're up to no good or not. You know, <laughs> they're just fine. Um, which is, you know, if you guys have been at, uh, at Peterson Pits, you know, I can go out there, I can just start looking around, I can look at people and look at them and be like, okay, something's going on here or not, or if it's just a family out and enjoying themselves. Um, yeah. So that is the hard part, uh, especially going from, uh, I came from the Eagle Grove, Fort Dodge area, more of a rural area, to Ames, where it's a college town and everything else, uh, a little bit more of a different clientele. Uh, so that was kind of relearning that, because like I said, I went to college here and worked here 100 years ago. Um, <laughs> trying to relearn that was a lot different. So, yeah. Um, and other hard part is, you know, the schooling. Um, I really wish I would have taken speech class in high school, college just because I didn't realize public speaking was that much uh, in this job. Um, I'm always doing items like this, teaching hunter safety. I've been doing that for years. Um, just being able to talk to people. And uh, obviously you can tell I'm not afraid to talk to people. Uh, this, this is another challenge is learning how to do it with the earphone, the earbud in. I'm used to talking to people and uh, looking at people and reading them. Um, and um, like I said, and, other things at school too is English class, you know, it's not just speech, but uh, writing a grant. Um, we're closing out our, our REAP grant, the Resource Enhancement and Protection Grant for our child property. There's uh, uh, just under a, quarter, a half million dollars, $452,000. It was 46 pages long, pictures, diagrams, and what I had to do in there. Uh, I've always wanted to call my high school uh, English teacher and tell her thank you because didn't really pay attention that much back then, but now it's like, oh, now I understand why it was needed so much. So, um, yeah. So yeah that's a great point. Fun. That's a great point. Um, so you kind of mentioned, you know, getting the experience is, is crucial in this field. And so whether that's volunteering or internships, do you have any other advice for students who are interested in this area? That's one of the largest items there is getting the experience uh, and obviously the education. Um, but at the same time, you know, we, I've interviewed tons of people over the years that will have the education but no experience. Um, or, the, uh, or the opposite of it, people that have experience. I know they do a great job, but they don't have that two or four year degree that, you know, is a prerequisite at times. Um, but getting those, maybe volunteering, it, just people recognizing you uh, really does help. With that, like, hey, I remember you from the, the teams day where we're out there working on the trail. They remember that. Um, or weren't you my intern two years ago? I still talked to uh, uh, my boss uh, when I worked for the, at Brethy Creek State Park for the DNR uh, 25 years ago. Uh, he just retired, and I, I still talked to him like there's nothing else because I had a good rapport with him. I was able to work. I was you know, a hard worker for him, I hope, because uh, he still talks to me, I'm hoping. So I'm out there and talking to people. And you know, making a good a name for yourself. Um, don't, and that's a big thing. Just don't kind of get into your own little ball or a little hiding place. Get out there and get to meet people. Um, uh, networking is a, a, a large item. Deal with that as well too. Uh, just um, learning from other people also. Is I, I, I have a big a third and uh, first grader, and I keep telling them, I said, just remember, you know, the less you talk, the more you hear, the more you learn. Yeah. At the same time, I don't want them to kind of be quiet. I so say you also have to talk and uh, not be afraid to talk to people uh, and be kind of outgoing with that as well. Yep, it's, it's a balance, that's for sure. Um, and the last question I have for you today, Pat, is what is the job outlook for this field? Um, is, is it growing? Do you anticipate adding more people to your office? Here at Story County, we're, we're obviously always looking um, to add. We are definitely, um, I don't want to say overwhelmed, but swamped with work right now, uh, especially this spring when the shutdown happened in you know, March and April. That was our busy time. We're out doing our prairie burns. We're doing, you know, getting ready for the summertime and everything got shut down. Uh, the four law enforcement officers, obviously we were working uh, essential employees. So we're definitely swamped right now and we're trying to show, justify, you know, adding more positions. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see how that goes because, you know, we keep on taking more properties. You know, right now we manage uh, 3,500 acres in the, in the county and 
the way things are going the next five years, it could be 4,500 uh, acres. Um, it, it takes manpower to go out there to manage all those properties. Um, and so, you know, like I said, it just, it takes a lot of people to make that happen. Um, we have, you know, probably the best naturalist group in the state. Um, one of our uh, naturalists, Heather, she was the national interpreter of, uh, of the year for the nation, uh, constantly getting awards, They're very active. Uh, this shutdown right now is driving them crazy because they're in the schools. I know they probably, whoever's watching this, you've probably seen all of them at one time or not. Um, so, and that's, you know, that's the kind of thing we have, you know, great parks, we have our natural resources, we're very focused on native prairie, the remnant prairies. Um, so we're always constantly looking out, you know, for uh, qualified people. We've actually had a lot of turnaround in the last, since I've been here three years, we were at five or six different employees. You know, if we, ha we, ha we go all the way from a technician all the way up to the director, a lot of times those technicians are uh, kind of starters, you know, when you're yeah. out of college. Uh, we were up to, I believe in three years, we lost four of them and then hired new people. But we just actually hired two, uh, two new ones a couple months ago. Wow. So there's constantly turnover and um, it's just people retiring. Um, always, you know, there's always opportunities. When I got out of college, it, it took me a year and a half until I was able to find a job because there was no job openings. Uh, it was just very slow. And then you fast forward four more years after that and people are getting hired left and right. It's, it's a kind of ebb and flow. So and I like to tell people too, if you don't find a job right out of college, you know, I mean, obviously you want to work and everything. Uh, just don't give up on it because it seems like once, especially in the conservation field, once you get out of the conservation field, like, oh, I'm going to go work for uh, a factory or something for a year or two, you never see, I never see those people come back. Or um, 15 years later, and they'll be like, I wish I was stuck with it. Um, it is a passion dealing with natural resources uh, and with the public. Mm -hmm. So it, once you lose it, you kind of do. But at the same time, a lot of those people, the ones that come out and they volunteer for us, they're doing, you know, the, the prayer walks with us. Uh, so um, it, it kind of makes it a little bit uh, different with that. So I always help you just kind of stick with it. I mean, obviously, there's other opportunities. You never know. Um, I was telling a story last night. I said one of my uh, good friend's uh, dad came over and got talking to him. I told him I was going into wildlife biology. And he's like, oh, I, I got a forestry degree from Iowa State in the 70s. Said, You're president of a bank. He's like, yeah, for your degree, moved me all the way up. He goes, I couldn't find a job. I didn't want to move out to the West. Um, yeah. That's the other thing I don't want to talk about. You know, it's not just Iowa. There's so many jobs out in the, in the mountains and, and on, on both coasts. There's tons of opportunities. We had a really good job or a, a summer intern that didn't put in for one of our jobs, but he wants to move out west. And he's got his degree. He's just trying to find the right job out there. Um, a lot of jobs out there. I, I'm kind of a more of a Midwestern person. I've been to the mountains. Uh, I kind of like it here. I like to visit out there, but um, yeah. I don't need to work out there. I guess. But some people don't. They don't want to be. So. Sure. There's a lot of jobs, especially a lot of federal jobs out there. Oh, that makes sense. Well, I think I speak for everyone who has been out and about in um, all of the Story County parks since the shutdown started. And thank you for all of the extra work that I'm sure you guys all have been doing long days. Um, you know, conservation is, like you said, it's a passion and so many people get to benefit from your work. And so um, with that, I just want to say thank you so much for the time and sharing your knowledge and experience with us. And um, uh, hopefully this will inspire some young students to at least come out and volunteer and get some more experience and um, start their, their careers. Yep, and, and we're only you know, five minute drive north of town at McFarland Park out here, beautiful park. Uh, we're losing a lot of our leaves. It's beautiful, it's still pretty uh, beautiful right now. Uh, but, you know, this is our kind of our base of operations. So if you see one of us around, don't be afraid to come up and talk to us. Uh, I, I, I never shy away if someone's got a question or anything like that. So and we have a, like a, a great staff out here. So don't be afraid to come out and just talk to us, ask us questions. Uh, we're used to it. So and that's what we're here for. So hope you guys get out and uh, enjoy the nature a little bit more. All right. Thank you so much. No problem.